The most exciting feature of Mosaic version 12 is no doubt the new cabinet shaping functionality. But I really want to introduce you to this in a special way that really drills down on how flexible and powerful this is. So let's dive over to the shape tab and take a look at what I'm talking about. So Mosaic's always been able to shape cabinets from the top down perspective. And now brand new in version 12, you're able to shape cabinets from either the front perspective or the side perspective. Now this might seem simplistic at first, allow me to introduce you to how flexible this is and just how you can use this to build some incredible items. So I'm gonna use this example to show you something very random, but also just to showcase some of the flexibility of exactly what you can do with this new feature. So I'm looking at the side perspective of this cabinet. I'm now gonna click the edit side shape button. You'll be presented with a warning to let you know that you can shape from one perspective at a time which means if I choose to shape my cabinet from the side, the front and top tabs will be locked down. Click yes to continue and enter the new part editor. So I'm gonna make this a little bit larger and take up half my screen. Now we're looking side on at the cabinet. It's currently 750 by 300. I'm gonna go ahead and start to change the shape. So let's click on the top line here and what we wanna do is click the add point to add a brand new point. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and click on the top point and reposition where that belongs. So effectively, I've clipped the back edge of this cabinet off. As soon as I click OK, we're gonna see that take place and everything will update. Let's take that a step further. Let's go back into the edit side shape and let's go ahead and see what happens if now we wanna add a, let's say we have a horizontal pipe trace running through this section. So let's go ahead and click on the 600 section and add a new point. I'm gonna define the starting point of my pipe chase at 150. I'm then gonna go ahead and add another point and define where I want that point to finish. I'm gonna choose 300. I'm then gonna click in between those two lines and add another point. That point I'm gonna simply drag across until it snaps to the middle of the cabinet. Of course, you can also enter exact sizes, but I'm happy with the 150 by 150. I'm then gonna add a fourth point and then use the smart snapping to snap that into place. Now that I've got my cutout, let's click OK. And straight away, as we can see, we've now got a cutout that's running right through the bottom section of that cabinet. Let's take that a step further. What happens if we go back in and we say that this top section actually isn't an angle, we need that to be curved. So this is where it gets really interesting. Let's go in here and put a negative 50 curve value and now click OK. And now what we can see We've got a curved panel that's been created. I'm not even scratching the surface of what's possible here. So let's just keep taking this further and see what we can do. I'm gonna click on this front edge of the cabinet and I'm gonna say that these are no longer doors. What happens if we make this a back? And now let's say the actual door is on top of the cabinet. So I'm gonna click on the top section of the cabinet and change the type from a top to a face. Now on my face tab, I've got the ability to click in this section and define what type of face I would like to assign. Let's go ahead and make that a door hinged from the bottom. Now let's say we want to adjust the top edge of the door. I can go into the adjustments and go ahead and adjust the top edge to increase that to overlap my curved panel. Now this isn't just adding the components, this is also adding the machining for all these components. As you can see, the hinges are being machined. If I wanna go ahead and change where my adjustable shelf is positioned, I can go into the interior of the cabinet and I can move that shelf position. I can even take that a step further by going back into the shape tab, clicking on the back edge and pressing adjust side. I can go ahead and tell it to bore adjustable shelf holes in the center of that back edge. And now we can see those shelf holes have turned on. The crazy thing, this has actually been mortise and tenoned as well. So you've got dado or qualified dado constructions happening right out of the box. Let's go ahead and just turn on a high detail mode here so we can see this in full detail. As we can see, we've got some mortise and tenons or qualified dados, depending on where you're from, happening right out of the box on these brand new shaped sections. Now let's see if we can take that even further again. Let's see if we can click on this bottom edge here and change that from being a back to something like a face. And then for this face, let's see if we can insert a drawer into that section. So we'll go to the face three and we'll go ahead to the type here and choose a drawer. And just like that, now we've got a drawer built into that lower section. I mean, Mosaic has completely changed the game with what's happening here. 
you're able to take what's a regular cabinet and construct something completely mind-blowing with just a few clicks. The simplicity and power of how this works is truly next level. But it doesn't just stop there. You can also change the style of the doors that you're assigning to these unique faces. And that's where it gets really crazy. Let's go ahead here and press overrides on this lower draw front section and we'll change the style of the draw front. Let's go ahead and choose something like a V grooved draw front. Now, what if we wanted to choose a completely different style for the top section? No problem. Let's go ahead and go to face two, click on the door itself, click overrides, go ahead and change the door style to whatever we want it to be. I'm gonna use a shaker door as an example. You can go ahead and choose whichever routing pattern you would like to assign to the shaker door and whichever tool you would like to use as your pocketing tool. Let's say if you wanted to change the pull or handle selection on one of these faces. No problem, just click overrides, go ahead and change the pull selection to something that's in your library. I'm gonna use this example from Momo Handles. Now let's say what if you wanted to actually change the color or appearance of those handles. We've got you there too. Let's go to textures and go ahead and override the texture assigned to this particular cabinet. I'm gonna go ahead and choose a brass texture. And just like that, we've built something completely random that has the flexibility, not just creating the shapes, but also creating mortise and tenon constructions or qualified dados, along with all the adjustable shelf drilling operations and screw operations, putting drawers inside custom sections, having cutouts that run through a cabinet, adding curved sections, customizing door styles and adding handles. This has really changed the game in the flexibility of what you can build with Mosaic software. Mosaic version 12 is now available to download from the Mosaic user forum. So download it today and let us know what you've built with version 12. We're really excited to see what you can do with this new functionality. I'm David Carr from CADMate. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoy Mosaic version 12.